Have you ever been in a situation where every relationship before just didn't seem to work out? The road seems straightforward at first, but then it starts to twist and turn. The sky darkens, and you find yourself in a fog so thick you can barely see your own hands in front of you. The confusion sets in, and you start to question everything. Is this really the way? Am I even on the right path? What if I never find them? But here's something important to remember. The fog, the confusion, it's not a sign that you're lost. It's a sign that you're exactly where you need to be. God doesn't always lead us down clear, easy paths. Sometimes He guides us through the uncertainty, the doubt, and the fear because it's in these moments that we grow the most. You see, when you're searching for your soulmate, it's easy to expect that everything will just click into place. You'll meet them, and there'll be this instant connection. Fireworks, and everything will just make sense. But that's not always how God works. Sometimes the person God has chosen for you doesn't come into your life with a neon sign flashing, this is the one. Instead, they might come quietly, in a way that's easy to overlook if you're not paying attention. And that's where the confusion comes in. When God is preparing you for your soulmate, he often allows confusion to set in, not to frustrate you, but to refine you. It's like when a sculptor chisels away a block of marble. Each strike of the hammer seems harsh, but with each blow, the rough stone becomes a masterpiece. Your confusion is God's way of chiseling away at the parts of you that need to be shaped before you're ready to recognize and appreciate the person He has for you. Think about it. If everything was always clear, if you never faced doubt or confusion, would you really grow? Would you really be prepared for the depth of connection that a true soulmate brings? Probably not. It's in the fog that your faith is tested, and it's in the fog that your faith grows. It's easy to trust God when the sun is shining, but it's in the darkness that your trust becomes real. God allows confusion because it forces us to lean on Him. When you're confused, when you don't know which way to turn, that's when you have to trust God is leading you, even if you can't see where you're going. And here's the beautiful part. God isn't just leading you blindly, He's preparing you. Number one, the uncomfortable waiting period. Imagine you're searching for someone special and every relationship you try seems to fall apart. It seems like you're walking through a desert with no oasis in sight. You might begin to doubt yourself, wondering if marriage is even in God's plan for you. You might think, maybe I'm just meant to be single. But here's where God's plan gets interesting. God may allow you to experience failed relationships not as a punishment, but as a way of preserving you for the right person. Those closed doors are not meant to discourage you, but to protect you from settling for less than God's best. The ache you feel, the longing for companionship, isn't a sign that God has forgotten you. Instead, it's an indicator that God has something better in store. Paul speaks of being content in singleness, and if that's your calling, you will know peace in it. But if there's a stirring in your heart, a desire for a godly union, that's God nudging you to trust in His timing. He may keep you in a season of uncertainty to build your faith and patience, the discomfort isn't to dishearten you, it's to prepare you. God wants to make sure you're ready for the person He has set apart for you. Number 2. When Insecurities Clash Now let's talk about that moment when you finally meet your person. It may not be all sunshine and roses. In fact, it might feel like a storm is brewing. You see, God doesn't always bring you together with someone who perfectly matches your expectations. Sometimes, He pairs you with someone whose insecurities mirror or even magnify your own. This can lead to a clash of emotions that leaves you feeling more vulnerable than ever. For example, you might be afraid of rejection, and so is your partner. Your fear makes you withdraw, while their fear makes them anxious. It's like two waves crashing into each other, causing turbulence instead of calm. Why would God allow this? Because He knows that through this turmoil, you will learn to lean on Him. When your insecurities are laid bare and your fears are exposed, it forces you to turn to God 
for the security that no human relationship can provide. God isn't interested in giving you a partner who will make you comfortable. He's interested in giving you a partner who will push you towards Him. Philippians 4.13 tells us, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This isn't just a verse for tough times. It's a reminder that even in relationships, your strength must come from Christ. When your insecurities are flaring up and the relationship feels more like a battlefield than a safe haven, that's when you must anchor yourself in God. The confusion you feel when you meet your soulmate is not a sign that you're on the wrong path. Rather, it's a part of God's divine strategy. He knows that if everything was smooth and easy, you might rely too much on your partner and not enough on him. But by allowing some friction, some uncertainty, God is drawing you closer to him. He's teaching you that your ultimate security, peace, and identity must be rooted in him, not in any person, no matter how much you love them. The confusion is a tool in God's hands, sharpening you, refining you, and making you more like Christ. So, if you find yourself confused when you meet your soulmate, don't panic. Instead, see it as God's way of telling you to dig deeper into your relationship with Him. Trust that He knows what He's doing, even when you don't. He's not just writing a love story for you, He's writing a story that brings you closer to Him. In the end, the confusion will fade, and what will remain is a bond that's stronger because it was forged in faith and dependence on God. Number three, shattered expectations. Imagine you've built this perfect picture of love in your mind. It's shaped by fairy tales, movies, and social media, but it's a dream, not reality. God knows that for you to truly love and be loved, this illusion must be broken. Your immature expectations need to be shattered. Why? Because the happiness you crave, the peace you long for, often slips away when reality doesn't match your expectations. The wider the gap between what you imagine love to be and what it really is, the more unrest you feel in your soul. But here's the truth. Peace isn't found in your fantasies, but in aligning your desires with God's will for you. When you pursue something that God hasn't planned for you, you're setting yourself up for inner turmoil. Your soul becomes restless, like a ship tossed in a storm. True love, the kind that God has designed for you, thrives not in the perfect, filtered world of social media, but in the raw, unfiltered messiness of real life. 1 Corinthians 13.7 beautifully sums this up. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. When God reveals your person to you, it won't be the easy, perfect fairy tale you dreamed of. It will be harder, yes, but infinitely better than you could have ever imagined. Number four, flaws on display. Now let's talk about something a bit uncomfortable, our flaws. We all have them, and if we're honest, most of us try to hide them especially from someone we're trying to impress. But here's the thing, God in His infinite wisdom won't let you keep those flaws hidden from the person He has chosen for you. Why? Because if you could successfully hide your flaws, you'd never know if that person truly loves you. You'd always wonder, would they still love me if they saw the real me? This doubt would gnaw at you, keeping you from experiencing the full depth of true love. The love God wants for you is not based on perfection, but on grace. When you finally commit to someone, knowing that neither of you is perfect, that's when love becomes real. It's not about two perfect people finding each other. It's about two imperfect people choosing to love each other despite their flaws. As 1 Peter 4, 8 says, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Number five, trials by fire, bonds forged in love. Love isn't always easy. In fact, God often allows us to go through tough times, especially with the person he is destined for us. But these trials aren't meant to break you. They're meant to forge you together, stronger and closer than before. Think of it like a piece of metal being heated in a forge, 
pounded and shaped by a blacksmith. It's not a gentle process, but it's necessary to remove the impurities and shape it into something beautiful and useful. In the same way, the challenges you face together with your soulmate are God's way of removing imperfections and sanctifying your relationship. Colossians 3.14 reminds us, And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Through the hardships, your love is refined, strengthened, and bound together in a way that only God can achieve. This is the season where God's divine plan unfolds, bringing you closer to the one meant to be your spouse. No matter how reserved or shy they may be, God will stir their hearts, making them eager to express their love for you. Remember, the Bible assures us that God gives us a spirit of courage and soundness of mind. Your destined partner will be filled with this courage to reach out to you. Sometimes, the reason people remain single is that their destined partner is caught up in other distractions. Even if they recognize their feelings, they might delay expressing them. But take heart, beloved, for when your appointed time for favor comes, God will move mountains on your behalf. He will remove any hindrance, break any protocol, and destroy any barrier that stands between you and your blessing. Your partner, whom you've been waiting for, is indeed a blessing from God. And just as He removes obstacles from your path, He will ensure nothing stands between you and the confession of their love. Often, our prayers are already answered, but dark forces try to hinder their manifestations because the enemy doesn't want to see us happy. Yet this time, the enemy's plans will be thwarted. Your destined partner will find their way to you, boldly confessing their love. Every chain that held them back will be shattered in the mighty name of Jesus. The enemy might have led them astray, confusing them with distractions or the wrong relationships, making them like lost sheep. But from this very moment, God will make them restless until they acknowledge their true feelings. God is the essence of love and the perfect matchmaker. He deeply cares about your marital life and will not let you veer off the right path. God will ensure that the person meant for you feels an undeniable urge to confess their love. Just as many married couples are brought together by divine timing, so will you be united with your partner to fulfill the purpose God has set for both of you. In this season, God is orchestrating events to align with His perfect timing for you. He is softening hearts and preparing minds, ensuring that your partner gains the courage to approach you. Sometimes people delay out of fear or uncertainty, but God's timing is impeccable. He knows when the moment's right, and He'll not let anything interfere with His plans for you. Think of the times when you felt a nudge in your spirit, a sense that something significant was about to happen. That's God at work, preparing the way. He's always at work behind the scenes, arranging circumstances in your favor. Your partner might be battling doubts or distractions, but God's hand is moving to bring clarity and boldness. As you stand in faith, know that God's promises are true. He will not leave you waiting indefinitely. Your prayers have reached heaven, and the answers are on their way. God's timing is perfect, and He is never late. Trust that He's moving hearts, aligning thoughts, and paving the way for that divine confession of love. You might have felt unworthy, or been told you're not enough, that you're too old, or that no one could ever truly love you. These are lies from the enemy. Remember, God created each of us with a purpose, and just as He created Eve for Adam, He has someone special for you. It may have taken time for them to find their way to you, but that does not diminish your value. You are still God's masterpiece, perfectly designed and uniquely beautiful, destined to be someone's perfect partner. In this moment, regardless of how far they may have wandered, 
God's power will work in their hearts, making them restless until they come forward and express their love for you. We often get caught up in worrying about how things will happen. Instead, let's place our trust in God's hands to handle the how. He is the God of the impossible, and no situation is too difficult for Him. Those who doubted you will be astounded by what God is doing in your life. Very soon you will be celebrated, holding your own children just like other married couples. For those who are already married but feel that their partner's love has faded or that they seldom express it, there's no need to despair. God is ready to renew your relationship. Your partner may have been distracted by life's demands, work, stress, or other concerns, and the enemy uses these distractions to attack marriages. But God is greater. He is about to reignite the love and desire in your marriage. He will work in your partner's heart, making them see you with fresh eyes, filled with the same love and admiration they once had. They will be moved to openly declare their love for you once again. When the moment comes, it'll be undeniable. Your partner will be filled with an overwhelming sense of love and the need to express it. They will be drawn to you, compelled by a force greater than themselves. This is God's love in action, ensuring that His plans for you come to fruition. Be ready, for God is moving even now, and your season of waiting is transforming into a season of joyful union. God is preparing you for a breakthrough in your relationship. He's giving you the strength and love needed to make your marriage a joyful union. Right now, you might be with someone who is too proud to admit their feelings. Remember, the Bible tells us that God can turn the heart of a king wherever he wishes. He can transform your partner's pride into humility, bringing the love and peace your home needs. God knows each of us intimately and will keep working on their heart until they finally express their love for you. Sometimes the person God has destined for you may reject you because you don't fit their ideal image. They might turn away because you don't meet their expectations. This can be disheartening and may lead you to seek God's guidance repeatedly. But trust in His plan. God will not let them rest until they realize their true feelings and confess their love for you. You don't need to chase them. God will orchestrate the circumstances for them to come to you. Patience is a virtue we often struggle with. We want things to happen on our timeline, but God's timing is perfect, even if it seems like it's taking forever. Hold on to your faith. God will ensure that the person He's chosen for you will come to recognize their love for you. They might try to suppress their feelings, but God will make them restless until they confess. The Bible assures us that God makes everything beautiful in its time. When your season arrives, God will make it happen. Many singles rush into relationships without waiting for God's perfect plan, even when He has shown them His intentions. Don't settle for less when God has more in store for you. He'll bring the right person into your life and they will openly declare their love. Understand this, God is at work even when you can't see it. He knows your heart's desires and will fulfill them in His time. Trust that He's shaping your partner's heart, removing pride and planting seeds of love. The one God has chosen for you will come to you with a humble heart and a genuine confession of love. In times of doubt, remember God's promises. He is faithful and will not leave you alone. The journey may be tough, but the outcome is worth the wait. God's love for you is steadfast, and He's preparing a love story that reflects His glory. So, stand firm in your faith, be patient, and watch how God turns things around. God's timing is impeccable. He's aligning everything for your good. Stay hopeful and trust that your season of joy is coming. Your partner will recognize the love that God has planted in their heart for you and will come forward with a confession that will change everything. God is at work behind the scenes, 
preparing a beautiful union for you. Trust in His plan. Be patient. Then watch as He brings your partner to confess their love. God's love for you is boundless, and He's preparing the best for you. God reaches out to each of us in different ways. Maybe you felt His presence deeply because of your strong relationship with Him. For others, they might still be discovering His love and guidance. Don't lose hope or believe anyone who says that the person destined to you will not come forward. They will. Trust in God's plan and wait with faith. Sometimes people around you might act out of jealousy or resentment. They might mistreat you simply because they see qualities in you that they wish they had. It's important to remember that often, what appears as dislike is actually rooted in a deep admiration. When someone seems to hate you, it's because they recognize something special in you that they desire for themselves. But don't be disheartened. God is at work softening their hearts and stirring their spirits. He won't let them rest until they confess their true feelings. You'll notice them start to warm up to you. Then, soon enough, they'll declare their love. This period in your life is going to be filled with love and peace like you've never known before. For all the tears you've shed in silence because of the way you've been treated, God is going to bring you joy and abundance. You are cherished by Him and He wants nothing but happiness for you. As it says in James 1.17, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. The love that is coming your way is a divine gift from God, who is constant and unwavering. The person who will confess their love for you is a part of God's perfect plan, and together you will achieve great things. God will ensure that this person can't rest until they have shared their love with you. Regardless of who they are or where they come from, God is moving heaven and earth to bring them to you. You won't miss each other. You'll be exactly where God wants you to be at the right time. The enemy will not succeed in hindering this blessing in your life. Today I pray that you receive the strength and patience to trust in God's perfect timing. Know that He is orchestrating everything for your good, and the person who is meant to love you will come forward when the moment is right. Keep your faith strong and prepare to welcome the love and joy that God is bringing into your life. You've met someone who makes your heart race, someone you believe is your perfect match. But it feels like everything is conspiring against your love story. Maybe they're not as responsive as you'd like, or perhaps the timing seems all wrong. In moments like these, it's easy to feel disheartened. But I'm here to remind you that God's plan for your love life is far more intricate and beautiful than you can imagine. Love isn't always straightforward. Sometimes it feels like you're the only one putting in the effort, the only one trying to make things work. It's like throwing a ball against the wall, hoping it'll bounce back, but it just drops flat. When you're constantly reaching out, checking in, and your efforts are met with silence, it's easy to wonder if it's all worth it. But don't let this discourage you. Remember, God's timing is impeccable. Think about it. Why would God allow you to harbor such strong feelings if there wasn't a purpose behind it? Sometimes, we're meant to face these trials to strengthen our character and faith. It's not always about immediate gratification. God often uses these moments to mold us, to prepare us for the beautiful future He has in store. Have you ever connected with someone instantly, but found that the timing just wasn't right? It's like meeting the love of your life on a sinking ship. Everything is perfect except the circumstances. This is where faith steps in. Trust that God's timing is flawless. If this person is meant to be in your life, nothing will prevent it from happening. Remember, God isn't bound by our concept of time. He transcends it. The frustration you feel now might be God's way of telling you to wait, to be patient. His plans for you were set long before you were born, 
and they are more perfect than you can imagine. As it says in Ecclesiastes 3.11, He has made everything beautiful in its time. Your love story is no exception. God's Will Understanding God's will can be challenging, especially when it seems to conflict with our desires. But Ephesians 1.11 reminds us, In Him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will. This means that God's plan for you, including your relationships, was crafted with divine wisdom. Sometimes what seems like a missed opportunity is actually God's protection or preparation. Perhaps this time is meant for you to grow, to become the person you need to be for that future relationship. God might be using this period to refine your character, to teach you patience, or to help you learn the value of true commitment. So don't lose hope. Trust that if this person is part of God's plan for you, it will happen. No amount of time or distance can change that. Keep your faith strong and focus on becoming the best version of yourself. When the timing is right, everything will align perfectly and you'll look back and understand why you had to wait. In the meantime, embrace your journey. Every moment, every trial, and every tear is shaping you. Romans 8.28 assures us, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Your struggles today are building the foundation for a stronger, more resilient love tomorrow. Don't give up on love. Hold on to your faith and trust in God's plan. He is the master storyteller, and your love story is being written with care and precision. The moments of doubt and despair are just chapters in a grander narrative that will ultimately lead to a beautiful, fulfilling relationship. When you're in the midst of this storm, it's easy to feel like giving up. Maybe you've been praying for a breakthrough, for a sign that this relationship is meant to be. Maybe you feel like you've been holding on for too long and you're wondering why God hasn't answered your prayers. But what if the answer is in the waiting? What if God is using this time to strengthen you, to prepare you both for something even greater? Think of the story of Joseph in the Bible. He was sold into slavery by his brothers, falsely accused and thrown into prison. It seemed like everything was against him but he held on to his faith. And in the end, he was not only freed, but also placed in a position of great power. His journey was long and painful, but it led to a beautiful and fulfilling purpose. Your love story can be like that too. It's okay to feel frustrated, to wonder why things aren't changing as quickly as you'd like. But remember, God works in his own time, not ours. He sees the bigger picture and he knows what we need even before we ask. Let me share a story about a friend of mine. She was in a relationship that was rocky at best. They argued constantly, and it seemed like they were always on the verge of breaking up. She prayed for God to either fix the relationship or help her move on, but nothing seemed to change. She felt stuck, like she was rowing a boat in a storm, going nowhere. But then, one day, something shifted. They started communicating better, understanding each other's perspectives more deeply. It wasn't an overnight change, but a gradual process. She realized that all those months of struggle had been building a stronger foundation for the relationship. They learned to weather the storms together, and it made their bond even stronger. In moments of doubt, remind yourself of the times God's been faithful in the past. Reflect on the ways He's carried you through difficult seasons. Hold on to these memories as anchors in the storm. It's important to remember that love is not just a feeling, it's a commitment. Feelings can be fleeting, influenced by circumstances and emotions. But true love is steadfast, a choice to stay and work through the tough times. It's about seeing the potential in your partner, believing in the future you can build together. God's timing is perfect even when it feels excruciatingly slow to us. He knows what He's doing. Trust in His plan, 
even when you can't see the way forward. Keep praying, not just for the relationship to improve, but for wisdom, patience, and strength to endure the process. The enemy loves to sow seeds of doubt, to make us question God's promises and our own worth. But we must stand firm, rooted in the truth of God's word. He has promised to be with us, to never leave us or forsake us. He knows the desires of our hearts, and He wants to give us good things. So, don't give up on love. Hold on, because you're meant to be together. Trust that God is working behind the scenes, orchestrating events in ways you can't even imagine. The storms may be fierce, but they won't last forever. Keep rowing. Keep praying. Keep believing. Your destination is worth the journey. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7, it beautifully reminds us, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. This scripture underscores that love is resilient and enduring. If you're holding on to feelings for someone who you believe isn't meant for you, understand that God's purpose is to prepare you for something greater. Endure the current pain with patience, for God's timing is perfect and He's orchestrating every detail of your life. Sometimes, the journey involves learning to love selflessly and to trust the right person will come into your life at the right moment. But how do we move forward when the weight of unfulfilled love burdens our hearts? It all starts with the conscious decision to let go. The Apostle Paul in Philippians 3, 13-15 advises us, We must forget what lies behind and strain forward towards what lies ahead. This doesn't mean ignoring the past, but rather, it means not allowing the past to anchor us. Focus on what God has in store for you. By doing so, you shift your thoughts towards new beginnings and God's promises. Moving on is an active process. It involves forgiving yourself and others, releasing the past and embracing the future with hope. Forgiveness is crucial. Without it, we remain chained to the past, unable to embrace the new blessings God has for us. As you take steps towards your future, God works alongside you, helping you to release the old and welcome the new. This journey is not easy, but it is transformative. Consider this. If you're struggling to move on, it might be because you've not made a firm decision to do so. Just as we cannot stop breathing, we cannot stop thinking, but we can direct our thoughts towards new horizons. God wants us to take the first step. He desires action from us. By deciding to move forward, we align ourselves with His plan, allowing our hearts to heal and our minds to be renewed. Think of it this way. Moving on is like stepping out of a dark room into the light. The darkness represents past hurts and disappointments, while the light symbolizes God's future for you, bright, hopeful, and filled with promise. Every step you take towards healing and letting go, you move closer to the destiny God has for you. God's plans for you are always moving forward. He doesn't dwell in the past, and neither should we. Embrace the future with faith and trust in His plan. The pain of letting go is real, but so is the joy of discovering God's purpose for your life. Trust in His guidance and know that He's preparing you for a relationship that aligns with His divine will. When you find yourself longing for someone and wonder if this desire is truly from God or just your own feelings, there are some clear signs to look out for. Here are five clues to help you discern if your desire is God-given. 1. Does your desire align with biblical principles and commands? 
When God plants a desire in your heart, it will always lead you towards righteousness. Philippians 2.13 tells us, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. If your feelings for someone are steering you towards actions and behaviors that honor God, that's a strong indicator that this desire is from Him. On the other hand, if this desire pushes you towards sinful paths, it's a red flag. For instance, desiring someone who does not share your faith contradicts the biblical command to not be unequally yoked. 2 Corinthians 6.14 Similarly, if your desire leads you into sexual immorality, it clearly displeases the Lord, and you can be certain it's not from Him. Jesus said, You will recognize them by their fruits. Matthew 7.16 a desire from God will produce good fruit in your life. Peace, joy, patience, kindness, and self-control. If pursuing this person brings turmoil, anxiety, or leads you to compromise your values, then it's not from God. Conversely, if it brings growth, draws you closer to God, and fosters virtues like patience and kindness, it is more likely to be a desire placed in your heart by God. 2. Seek confirmation through prayer and wise counsel. Proverbs 11.14 says, Where there is no guidance, a people falls. But in an abundance of counselors, there is safety. When you're unsure about your feelings, pray earnestly for God's guidance. Additionally, Seek advice from trusted, godly mentors who can provide objective insights. God often uses others to confirm His will for us. If those around you who walk closely with the Lord affirm your feelings and see God's hand in it, that's a positive sign. Ecclesiastes 3.1 reminds us, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. God's timing is perfect, and a desire from Him will often align with His perfect plan for your life. If you feel rushed or pressured, it might be wise to pause and reflect. God-given desires are often accompanied by a sense of peace and patience, knowing that He is in control and His timing is best. 3. Pay close attention to the doors that God is opening in your life. When the path to pursuing a relationship is clear and unencumbered, it's a powerful sign that God may be guiding your desires. You might feel a strong, good, and biblical attraction to someone, a person who loves the Lord, encourages your spiritual growth, and fits many of your ideals. But it's essential to discern if this desire is truly from God or just your own emotions. Even when your feelings are strong, and seem to align with biblical values, God might still say no or not yet because He knows what's best for you. He might have a different plan, a better person, or a different timing in mind. Just like in the life of Paul, who had a sincere desire to preach in Bithynia, but was prevented by the Holy Spirit. Instead, he was led to Troas, where the door was wide open for his ministry. Acts 16, 7 and 8. Paul's desire was good, but it wasn't God's will at that moment. When God opened the door at Troas, Paul knew that was where he was meant to be. In the same way, if your desire for someone is from God, he will clear the path and open the necessary doors for that relationship to flourish there will be a sense of peace and alignment in the circumstances surrounding your relationship. You'll find that things fall into place naturally, without forcing or manipulating situations to fit your hopes. This divine orchestration is a clue that God is behind your desire, working everything together for your good and His glory. Imagine you're navigating a maze, and every turn you take leads to a dead end except one path opens up effortlessly before you. That's how God guidance often works in our lives. 
He closes some doors and opens others, leading us to where we're meant to be. So, if you're finding that your desire for a particular person is met with open doors and God's blessings, it's a strong indication that your desire aligns with His will. On the other hand, if you're constantly hitting obstacles, feeling unrest, or having to compromise your values to pursue someone, it might be a sign that this desire isn't from God. Trust His timing and His plans, for they are always perfect. He knows your heart, your desires, and your future. If you stay patient and faithful, He will reveal the right person and the right path for you. 4. If your main focus is just on what you can get from the relationship, it might be time to reassess. True, it's natural to want someone who makes you happy. But when God is the one guiding your heart, you'll find a deeper reason to be with that person. You'll also be eager to pour love and support into their life. It's about a balance where both of you uplift each other. Picture it like a partnership where both partners are constantly looking out for each other's well-being. When your desire for someone is God-given, you'll want to see them thrive and be happy just as much as you want that for yourself. You will feel a calling to offer them the love and support they deserve, which naturally leads to a stronger commitment. Think about it this way. A friendship might not be enough to contain the love you want to give. Your heart's overflowing with care and support, and you realize that only a deeper, more committed relationship can fully express that love. It's a beautiful sign that God is nudging you towards something more significant. Now, let's be clear. This doesn't mean that every strong desire or attraction is from God. We need to be careful and prayerful. But when your longing to be with someone is about more than just your own happiness, when it's about truly wanting to bless and support them, that's a strong indication that God is at work. So, as you seek to understand your feelings, take a moment to reflect on your motives. Are you driven by selfish desires, or is there a genuine, God-inspired love pushing you towards this person? Ask God for clarity and guidance. He's faithful and will reveal the true intentions of your heart. Do not forget, God's love is selfless, pure, and always seeking the best for others. When your desire mirrors that love, it's a beautiful clue that it might be from Him. Keep your heart open to His leading and trust that He will guide you to the right person in His perfect timing. 5. When your desire for someone aligns with your spiritual growth and strengthens your relationship with God, it's a significant clue that this desire comes from the Lord. Our connections deeply impact our faith journey. The people we surround ourselves with can either bolster or hinder our walk with God. If this relationship encourages your spiritual growth, it's a strong indication that it is God-ordained. Think about it. How many times have you noticed your passion for God wavering when you spend time with people who don't share your faith or values? This isn't a coincidence. God understands that our human relationships are pivotal to our spiritual health. That's why the Bible instructs us in 2 Timothy 2.22, So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Imagine your life as a garden. The people you let into your life can be like water and sunlight, helping you grow and flourish in your faith. Or they can be like weeds, choking your spiritual growth. When God places a desire for someone in your heart, it's often because this person will help you grow closer to Him. They will inspire you to pray more, read the Bible more, and live out your faith more boldly. Reflect on this. Is your desire for this person driving you closer to God? 
Do you find yourself more eager to dive into scripture, more motivated to attend church, or more passionate about living out your faith? If yes, these are not just feelings. They are divine nudges. God uses our relationships to draw us closer to Him. And when a relationship has this effect, it's a sign that it's from God. On the other hand, if you notice that your desire for someone leads you away from God, causing you to skip prayers, neglect your Bible study, or compromise your values, then it's likely that this person is not from God. A relationship that pulls you away from God's presence is a relationship that needs to be reevaluated. In essence, God-designed relationships are like iron sharpening iron, as described in Proverbs 27, 17. They push you towards your spiritual goals and make you a better follower of Christ. So, pay attention to how this person impacts your faith. Do they challenge you to be better? encourage you to stay committed to your spiritual disciplines and walk alongside you in your pursuit of righteousness? By seeking someone who helps, not hinders, your walk with God, you're aligning yourself with God's will. Remember, a relationship that comes from God will always lead you back to Him, enriching your spiritual journey and drawing you deeper into His love. Does God want you to have great sex in marriage? Some people often think God is uninterested in such things, but that is untrue. Now, I understand if this sounds bizarre, but that's exactly why God wants you to watch this video. So don't be shy. Watch until the end, and you will discover the pure truth about God's desire for your sex life. Do you often dream of what it would be like to have a happy marriage? It's something we all long for deep down. Imagine waking up every day next to someone who feels like they were made just for you. Someone who understands and supports you in every way. Think about sharing your life with a partner who brings out the best in you. Who you can laugh with, cry with, and grow with. This kind of relationship isn't just a fantasy. Let me share something amazing with you. It's truly possible for God to bring that person into your life, someone who is your perfect match, your soulmate. With your faith and trust in God, you can find that perfect match, the one who completes you and makes every day feel like a blessing. God is the ultimate matchmaker and He can bring the perfect person into your life, someone you'll marry and share incredible, fulfilling, great sex with. But let's talk about sex for a moment. Some people think sex is just about two people coming together and being sexually intimate. Well, for Christians, it is much more complex. Society often paints pictures of great sex based on lustful images from pornography or erotic novels making it seem like that's what sex should be. But great sex in a Christian marriage is deeper than that. It's not about those fleeting, shallow ideals. It's about a deep connection, a beautiful expression of love and unity designed by God. In a God-centered marriage, great sex is an intimate, loving bond that strengthens your relationship, bringing you closer together and closer to God. It can also be used to express emotional happiness. Proverbs 5, 18 and 19 says, May your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. A loving doe, a graceful deer, may her breasts satisfy you always. May you ever be intoxicated with her love. Marriage is a sacred covenant ordained by God, and within this covenant, Sex is a beautiful and meaningful expression of love between a husband and a wife. From a biblical perspective, great sex in marriage is deeply rooted in a few principles. Firstly, the foundation of great sex in marriage is being attracted to each other and committed to love. Great sex in marriage isn't just about the physical act. It's about being physically attracted to each other 
and being kind. If your marriage is missing these, the sex won't be great. Think about it this way. If you treat sex as just another duty, it can make your partner feel unloved. Sex should be an expression of love and connection, not just a task. Being physically attracted to each other keeps the spark alive and makes things exciting. It also builds trust and emotional closeness. When you treat sex like a chore, it loses its meaning. Your partner can feel this and might think you don't truly care. This can hurt your relationship and take away the joy and intimacy that should be there. Song of Solomon 7, 10 through 13 says, I belong to my beloved and his desire is for me. Come, my beloved, let us go to the countryside. Let us spend the night in the villages. Let us go early to the vineyards to see if the vines have budded, if their blossoms have opened, and if the pomegranates are in bloom there, I will give you my love. The mandrakes send out their fragrance, and at our door is every delicacy, both new and old, that I have stored up for you, my beloved. Secondly, you both can have great sex when you don't prioritize or idolize it over your needs or worth. When two people are genuinely committed to building a fulfilling marriage, they won't let physical desires overshadow the incredible plans God has for their union. It is important to know that a true believer who understands the real value of waiting wouldn't want to have sex before marriage. When you realize that it's not just about the act itself, but about preserving the sanctity and purity that God envisions for your relationship, you will treat sex as a very big deal. Hebrews 13.4 says, Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Embracing this mindset keeps your thoughts and actions aligned with God's purpose, staying clear of worldly distractions, and focusing on the deeper spiritual connection that will ultimately strengthen your bond and lead you to a more meaningful, God-centered marriage. Imagine meeting someone you believe is your perfect match. Suddenly, they start insisting on having sex before marriage. Beloved, know this. If they are pushing for sex before marriage, they are likely more interested in the physical act than in building a genuine, lasting relationship. True love means respecting each other and honoring your faith. If someone truly loves you, they won't pressure you to compromise your values. Instead, they will support your commitment to living as a true believer and building a relationship based on trust, respect, and spiritual connection. Valuing the person you love more than the desire for sex will eventually make you both have great sex in your marriage. Idolizing something in your life might ruin you. You can't enjoy something you crave too much. Sex is meant to be enjoyed within marriage. If you try to have it outside of that, it can lead to pain and trouble. Keep it within the bounds God intended, and it will bring joy and strengthen your bond with your spouse. The next step is that you are willing to forgive and accept each other's weaknesses. A sinful relationship will bring about a sinful sex life, while a godly relationship will bring about a godly sex life. Understanding your partner, knowing each other's weaknesses, and forgiving each other will enable you to have a healthy relationship. When you get married, your flaws will definitely come to light. It's normal for both of you to have different weaknesses. But if you don't feel the need to forgive each other, those weaknesses can turn into major issues. Unresolved conflicts will only grow, leading to resentment and bitterness. Over time, this can make your marriage unhappy and unfulfilled. Forgiveness is crucial. It's not just about letting go of mistakes. It includes understanding and supporting each other. By forgiving, you allow love and trust to flourish 
creating a deeper bond. This helps you face challenges and overcome them together rather than letting them drive you apart. Embracing forgiveness means choosing to build a strong, loving, and fulfilling marriage where both partners can thrive. Song of Solomon 215 KJV says, Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Don't let unforgiveness mess up the wonderful marital future God has for you. When you choose to forgive each other, you'll find that your intimacy improves. Great sex in marriage comes from putting each other first and making sure both of you feel appreciated and happy. In addition, you two will have great sex in marriage when there is room for open communication and honesty. Effective communication is key to understanding and meeting each other's needs. James 1.19 says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. When you practice good, honest communication, it creates a strong desire to truly understand each other. Respecting boundaries, knowing each other's desires, and listening to concerns become second nature. This kind of open, honest communication fosters a deeper connection between you and your spouse. As you grow closer and more in tune with each other, you'll find that your intimacy also improves. Great sex in marriage isn't just about physical attraction. It's about the emotional bond that comes from knowing and valuing your partner deeply. By communicating well, you build a foundation of trust and respect, which enhances every aspect of your relationship, including your sexual connection. This makes your marriage not only stronger, but also more fulfilling. Lastly, Praying together is one of the vital principles that will make you experience great sex in marriage. Praying together as a couple strengthens the spiritual bond and invites God's presence into the marriage. Philippians 4.6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. By seeking God's guidance and blessing over their sexual relationships, couples can experience a deeper level of intimacy and fulfillment. To have great sex in marriage, you need to draw closer to God in prayer. Seeking God will make you prioritize each other's needs and desires, ensuring that both partners feel valued and satisfied. Friend, great sex in marriage is about building a deep, loving and respectful relationship that honors God's plans for your life. Following these principles, couples can enjoy a rich and fulfilling sex life that glorifies God and strengthens their marriage. May you experience the bliss and fulfillment of a wonderful marital life. Amen. God bless you. God's hand is ever present guiding us toward our destiny. And in this path, He's preparing something incredibly special for you. A fresh start with someone He's specifically chosen for you. Yes, you read that right. God is giving you a new beginning with a person designed to walk with you, support you, and grow with you in His purpose. This isn't just any random person. This is someone chosen, specifically aligned with His plans for your life. Now, I know the waiting can be tough. It's hard when you feel ready, but it seems like God's taken His time. But let's pause for a moment and reflect on the story of Esther. When Esther was preparing to meet King Xerxes, every step she took was orchestrated by God. It wasn't just about the meeting. It was about the preparation, the timing, and the purpose behind it. Just as Esther was meticulously prepared for her role as queen, God is preparing you for your divine union. God's timing, though it may feel slow, is perfect. We see this in Ecclesiastes 3.1, where it's written, To everything there is a season, 
the time for every purpose under heaven. The season you're in right now is not a season of waiting without purpose. It's a season of preparation. God is not only preparing your future spouse, but also preparing you. He's shaping your character, building your faith, and aligning your path with the destiny He set before you. But here's the thing. Trusting God's timing requires a deep, unshakable faith. This isn't just about hoping for the best. It's about knowing, deep within your soul, that God is in control. He knows the desires of your heart because He placed them there. And as it says in Romans 8.28, all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. This means that even the moments of doubt, the times of loneliness, and the tears you've shed are all part of a greater plan. And let me tell you this, God is not in the business of half measures. He's not going to bring you just anyone. No, He's preparing someone who is perfectly suited to compliment you, to challenge you, and to grow with you. This person is an answer to your prayers, crafted by God's own hand to be your partner in life, in faith, and in purpose. They're out there, being prepared, just as you're being prepared. But what should you do while you wait? Don't just sit back and count the days. Use this time wisely. This is your opportunity to invest in yourself. Deep dive into discovering who you are in Christ. Strengthen your faith. Pursue your passions. And work on becoming the best version of yourself. This isn't just about being ready for your future spouse. It's about fulfilling the potential God has placed within you. You see, this waiting period isn't a punishment or a delay. It's a divine setup. It's a time where God refines you, increases your wisdom, and deepens your relationship with Him. So embrace it. Embrace the growth. Embrace the learning. And most importantly, embrace the trust that God is working all things out for your good. God's plans are never rushed. They're precise and they're perfect. And when the time is right, you'll see everything come together in a way that only He can orchestrate. The new start that God is offering you with someone chosen by Him is not just about finding love. It's about stepping into the next chapter of your life. A chapter filled with purpose, partnership, and a divine alignment. So hold on to your faith, keep trusting, keep growing, and keep believing. Your new beginning is on the horizon, and it's going to be more beautiful, more fulfilling, and more aligned with God's purpose for your life than you could ever imagine. This is your confirmation. God is giving you a new start with someone chosen just for you. Get ready, because your season is coming, and it's going to be glorious. There's a powerful truth that many of us overlook when seeking a life partner. We often rely on our own instincts, advice from friends, or the ideals we've set for ourselves. But let's pause for a moment. What if I told you that there's a greater plan at work, one that transcends our limited understanding? You see, when it comes to finding the person God has chosen for you, the process isn't just about swiping left or right, or ticking off boxes on a checklist. It's about aligning your heart with God's will and trusting in His timing. Think about it. Proverbs 3, 5-6 tells us to trust in the Lord with all our heart and not to lean on our own understanding. This isn't just a comforting verse. It's a directive. It's a call to surrender our desires and ambitions and to seek divine guidance. You might be wondering, but how do I know if this person is the one? The answer lies not in your feelings, but in your relationship with God. Have you been praying? seeking His wisdom, and truly listening to His voice? Or have you been trying to figure it out on your own? Sometimes life feels like a waiting room, stuck between where we are and where we hope to be. It's in these moments that God often does His most transformative work. While we wait, 
He's not just asking us to be patient. He's actively preparing us for something greater, something we may not even fully comprehend yet. The waiting isn't passive. It's a time of deep refinement and alignment with His divine will. And right now, He's preparing someone special just for you. Someone chosen to walk this life with you in a way that'll bring both of you closer to Him. Think about this. Esther didn't become queen overnight. She went through a long process of preparation before she was finally in the position to fulfill her God-given purpose. Just like Esther, you may be in a season of preparation. It may feel like a time of uncertainty or even frustration. But it's during this time that God is aligning everything perfectly. He's setting you up for a divine appointment and He's preparing your heart to receive the person He's chosen for you. You might be wondering, why does it have to take so long? Or is there really someone out there for me? These questions are natural, but remember that God's timing is always perfect. He's not in a rush and neither should we be. When God is at work, He's weaving together the most intricate details of your life. And that includes the person who will stand by your side. Now, let's take a moment to really grasp the significance of what's happening here. God, the creator of the universe, is orchestrating events, aligning people, and preparing circumstances just for you. It's as if He's setting the stage for the grand reveal of a masterpiece. And you're a part of that masterpiece. The person He's bringing into your life is not just a partner. They are a co-laborer in Christ. Someone who will help you fulfill the purpose that God has placed on your life. Together, you will reflect His love and make an impact in ways you've never imagined. God is giving you a new start with someone He's specifically chosen for you. But before you can embrace this blessing, there's something crucial you must do. Build your foundation in faith. Strengthen your relationship with God first. Because the strength of your relationship with your future spouse will be a direct reflection of your relationship with God. Remember, two strong individuals rooted in faith can weather any storm. But if your foundation is weak, even the smallest challenge can cause it to crumble. Waiting for the right person can feel like an eternity, especially when everyone around you seems to be finding their match. But let's not forget that the waiting isn't just about passing time. It's about preparation. Psalm 27, 14 says, Wait on the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. This waiting period is not a punishment, but a time of growth. It's in these moments of waiting that God is molding you, teaching you patience, and preparing you for the person He has in store for you. And while you wait, don't just sit idly by. Use this time to focus on becoming the best version of yourself. Dive deeper into your faith. Invest in your relationship with God and build the qualities that will make you a strong partner. This isn't about being perfect. It's about being prepared. God is shaping you for something extraordinary, and that takes time. Now, let's talk about contentment. Society often equates contentment with complacency, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Contentment is about finding peace and fulfillment in your current season, even if it's not exactly what you envisioned. Philippians 4.11 teaches us to be content in every situation. This doesn't mean that you're settling. It means you're trusting that God's plan is greater than your own. Contentment allows you to live fully in the present while anticipating the future blessings God has for you. Imagine this. You're standing at the edge of a vast, beautiful landscape, but you're so focused on what's beyond the horizon that you miss the beauty right in front of you. That's what happens when you're discontent. We miss the lessons, the growth, and the opportunities that God is placing in our current season because we're too focused on what's next. But when we embrace contentment, 
we allow God to work in us and through us, preparing us for the blessings to come. God is offering you a new beginning with someone who is uniquely chosen for you. But this new start requires faith, patience, and a heart that's open to His leadership. It's about more than just finding a partner. It's about stepping into the future God has prepared for you. So take this time to seek His guidance, to wait with purpose, and to be content in the knowledge that His plans for you are good. This is your specific confirmation. God is aligning your path with someone who will walk with you in faith, who will love you as Christ loves the church, and who will be your partner in fulfilling the purpose He has set before you. Trust in His timing. Prepare your heart. And when the time is right, you will step into the relationship that God has ordained for you. This isn't just about finding love. It's about stepping into a divine partnership that will glorify God and bring you joy.